This is the key part of the lecture. We now want to analyze the running time of the query algorithm and in the end we want to figure out how we can use this to solve our original problem, the triangular range queries. So let's start with the running time of the queries. Well, for any epsilon greater zero, there is some partition tree such that we can answer the half plane queries, the select and half plane, in order of n to the 1 over 2 plus epsilon time. So this is a little bit more than square root of n. And the set of nodes that we select is also this much. It's also order of n to the 1 divided by 2 plus epsilon. So also just a little bit more than square root of n nodes that we select. If we report them afterwards, then of course we need time to report each of them, but we can return them by these sets. And then anybody can look into these sets and find the nodes in there. So we don't have to explicitly return all the po points, we can just take these sets. And the property is of course that we have exactly the points that lie in the half plane in this set. So how can we prove this? We say, okay, we fix some epsilon greater zero. And we want to use the algorithm by Matuszek, where we get some simplicial partition, and then we get our tree from that, like we described earlier. And we have the crossing number order of square root of r in every step, and we can construct an order of m n to the 1 plus epsilon time. And the epsilon we picked here. But what is this r? And for this r, we want to make it dependent on this epsilon. First of all, we don't really like the order of square root of r, so for the analysis we will just say this is some constant c times square root of r. And then our r we pick at the following formula. It's 2 times square root of 2 c to the 1 over epsilon. So this is a bit weird. Um, this is a strange choice, it's not easy to come up with it. But with this choice of r, everything will come together at the end. So for now, just take this as a given that we have exactly this r. Now, what do we have to do? For our query algorithm, we take constant time if we have exactly one node left. That's clear. But what about if we have more than one node? How much time do we take here? Do you have an idea? So how much work do we have to do? We have to look at all the children and then we have to go into some of them recursively. So we have r children because we have a simplicial partition of size r. And into how many children do we have to go recursively? Well, that's exactly those that are intersected by the boundary line of our half plane. And by the lemma, the crossing number is c times square root of r, so there are at most c times square root of r of those. And for the recursion, we have to look into all those children of the root such that the boundary of the half plane crosses their triangle. So let's say c of h is all these children, then for each of them we have to recursively call our query algorithm for how many points there are inside this triangle. Okay, so this is our recurrence formula, but now we want to get something better for this. So first of all, we say, yeah, this depends on how many points there are in E. Do we have a bound on this? Do we know how many these are? Well, we defined earlier that this is a fine simplicial partition, and in a fine simplicial partition, we have at most 2n over r points in each of them. So we just say this is 2n over r. And how many children are there? Well, by this lemma, the crossing number is c times square root of r. And these children are exactly those that are crossed, so we have at most c times square root of r of them. So we can replace this by c times square root of r. And then we get our recurrence formula here. And now we want to plug in this here. We want to get rid of the r, and replace it by this term. And then we get the following recurrence. This is quite long. So this part here was the r, this part here was an r, and this part here was an r. So we just replace the r's by this term. 
And now don't look at this too closely. You don't have to understand what this means. We will simplify it now. The square root of 2c shows up everywhere. So we want to get rid of this and we just replace it by a d. So what does that mean? Well, here in the beginning we get 2 times d to the 1 over epsilon. This here becomes a d. This here is a d to the 1 over epsilon, but it's under the square root. And this here becomes a d. And we also get rid of the 2s here. So how does the formula look like now? We have 2d to the 1 over epsilon. This here is d plus 1 over 2 epsilon from the square root. And here we have n divided by d over 1 over epsilon. Well, this is something that you can look at and you can try to understand compared to this here. But how do we now analyze what this running time is? For that, we want to make use of the master theorem that you should know from algorithms and data structures. And the first case of the master theorem says, if a function lies in order of n to the log a base b minus epsilon prime, then qn lies in order of n to the log a base b. And what are these a, b's and f and fn? Well, we can say our recurrence formula in general looks like this. We have some functions plus a times q of n divided by b. So if we look at this formula and want to bring it in that form, our f of n is here. We have our multiplicative function a that is here. We have the b that we divide by it that is here. So we have to figure out, does this hold? And then it gives us that. So we have to find out, is what is this log a base b? So let's plug in the numbers. We have this as a, and we have this as b. So we have d to the 1 plus 1 over 2 epsilon here, and we have d to the 1 over epsilon here. And now what does the logarithm say? It says, what is the x such that b to the x is a? So what is the x such that this to the x is this? And for that, we only have to compare the exponents. To get from this exponent to this one, we just divide them by each other. So we have 1 plus 1 over 2 epsilon in the nominator and 1 over epsilon from here in the denominator. And this here, we can split the first as 1 over 1 over epsilon, so this is epsilon. And the second part here, 1 over 2 epsilon divided by 1 over epsilon, is just 1 over 2. So this term here solves to epsilon plus 1 over 2. And now, is our f of n in order of n to the epsilon plus 1 over 2 minus some epsilon prime? Well, of course it is, because this is just a constant. Our d is just the constant we get from the Matuschek algorithm. So this is order of 1, and it clearly lies inside here. So the condition holds. And that means that our recurrence formula solves to order of n log a base b, which is epsilon plus 1 over 2. And that gives us the time here, and the time we have is also exactly the time that we need to look at all the children, so it's exactly the number of children, so we get that many nodes. And that way we can prove the query time. And now with this lemma, and with the construction time we had before, we can now get as a corollary that the half-plane range counting queries can be answered in order of n to the 1 over 2 plus epsilon time if we use order of n to the 1 plus e epsilon preprocessing and order of n space. But now how can we use this to solve our original problem to solve these triangular queries? You have any idea? This is actually very easy. We don't have to do any weird stuff. We can just use the exact same algorithm. If we look at the algorithm here, instead of using a half plane, we just use the triangle. And then here we have to check 
does it lie in the triangle instead of in the half plane? And here we have to check what is the intersection with the triangle instead of with the half plane. And as long as we have a constant size polygon, this algorithm is exactly the same. So we can just use this for some constant size complexity objects and we don't have to change anything. So we get as a theorem. If we have a set of endpoints in the plane and any given epsilon greater zero, then we can do our triangular range counting query in order of n to the 1 over 2 plus epsilon time using our partition tree. We can build it in order of n to the 1 plus epsilon time and we use linear space. And additionally, we can also report all the points in the query range in order of k additional time where k is the number of reported points. Can we do this better? Yes, there has been a lot of work and one example that does it better are cutting trees. This is uh, explained in chapter 16.3 of the computational Ge geometry book by De Berg, Chong, Van Krefeld and Overmars. And there they have a query time of order of log to the 3n. So this is much better than a little bit more than square root of n. But the preparation storage is larger. So here they have n to the 2 plus epsilon. So if you have more time to pre-compute everything and you have more space, then you can answer them faster.